Hey everybody, welcome to Kara's Cucina. On this channel, we encourage everyday people to live healthier by inspiring them to cook delicious food at home. I'm Kara DeFalco and we are fulfilling a huge request today. I'm gonna to show you guys how to make gluten-free pasta. Our gluten-free pasta, of course, we have to thank our good friends over at Caputo Flour. It's their product that's gonna be making this possible. So we're using their gluten-free flour, Fior Glut, uh, and I will hook you guys up uh, with a link to the product in the description below or if you're on the website right in the ingredient list You can just click through and purchase it online um, But again as always Caputo always uh, making a really good product that turns out a really nice end product uh, So I've used this a couple of times this particular flour is mostly um, it's kind of a, a tri blend of a couple different grains so it's um, corn buckwheat and rice flour. So that's um, the, the main elements of the grains that's used in it. Uh, and it does have a slightly different texture uh, than uh, an all-purpose flour or even a pasta flour, but ultimately the pasta itself comes out really well. So I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys uh, two portions and the written recipe will actually be for four. So you can expand or contract the recipe to your needs. But we're basically just gonna put one cup of flour onto our work surface. And then this is always the fun part for everybody. We're gonna make it into a little volcano. I think I have flour in my hair already. And when we do this, you don't wanna go all the way down to the base of your board. Um, and you wanna make sure you have some sides because the next thing we're gonna do is add in our eggs. Um, so again, so I'm making a, an egg pasta here with this. And then in terms of setup, you always wanna make sure you have a little bit of extra flour uh, just on hand, cause you never know, you always have to kind of play with the texture of your dough. Um, so you might need to add a little more uh, depending on the temperature in your house, your elevation, all of that stuff. So it's really just a matter uh, of getting your hands in there and your hands are gonna get messy in this. Um, and then I also have a cookie sheet that we're gonna sprinkle a little extra flour on as well. This will be where our final uh, pieces of pasta go. So this can just hang out next to us. And the method I'm gonna show you guys in terms of um, creating the shape is truly gonna be a hand cut pasta. I will admit that's the one, um, I don't wanna say issue, but it's one thing I found with this um, particular flour is for whatever reason, the dough comes together very nicely, but it does not make its way through the machine real well. Um, I have a hand crank pasta machine. But if you wanna see that method, if you wanna give it a shot, I'll link you up with that, um, the regular fresh pasta video as well, and you can see how to do it with the hand crank machine. Or for those of you who have the, um, you know, the KitchenAid attachment at home, you can certainly give that a shot as well. So we put our two eggs in the center, and we're just taking our fork, we break the yolks very gently. You wanna to start to incorporate that flour till this gets sticky. And if it goes off the side, don't worry about it, just kind of, eventually you're gonna get in here with your hand. So if it starts running away from you, just get a little Little more flour on there, collect it back towards the center, and try to keep incorporating it. So this is just gonna take a couple of minutes till we start to kind of get a really sticky dough in the center. At this point that we have something that has kind of a batter texture to it um, in the center, we're gonna take a little of our extra flour, just sprinkle it on our fork, get what's on there off of there. And here's the fun, messy part. Now we're gonna go in with our hands. So we're just gonna start by working the sides in. And like I said, it's gonna be sticky, it's gonna be messy, and then it's gonna be pasta. So just have a little faith. <laughs> but we are gonna start to work this into a dough. When you're at the point that your hands look like this and you kinda are unsure what to do with yourself anymore, that's when we go for that extra flour, and again, just sprinkle it on and rub them together. The pieces will come right off. And then we're just gonna keep working our dough until all those pieces get incorporated. And again, it will eventually come together and it will be nice and smooth. So don't panic, don't worry. Just clean yourself up a little bit and keep at it. And if you have to use your fork to kind of scrape um, off your, your board a little bit, you can certainly do that as well. but we can see we're starting to get some a dough here. A few more minutes of kneading and now we can see it's come together 
We have this nice, really soft, smooth looking dough. Um, we don't really have big pieces or anything stuck to the board or much left on our hands. Certainly things are dirty, but um, everything is pretty much incorporated into your ball of dough. So at this point, um, you can wrap this tightly in plastic or you can just cover it with a damp kitchen towel or a damp paper towel. And this can just hang out uh, while you get yourself kind of cleaned up and situated for the next step. To form our pasta, you are gonna need a rolling pin um, and a nice sharp knife. Uh, even actually if you're at a loss for a rolling pin, an empty bottle of wine works, which uh, I understand many of us have plenty of these days, so <laughs> that'll work as well. Um, on our work surface, again, we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit more of the flour. And we're gonna unwrap our dough. And we're just gonna take a small portion of this and we'll leave the rest of it wrapped up. So we'll just take about a quarter of it at a time. This way it doesn't dry out on you. Keep the rest of it wrapped while we're working. So we're gonna start just by kind of forming this with our hands. And you are kind of ultimately going for a rectangular shape here in terms of rolling it out. And you'll see why when we go to cut it. Once you have it about as flat as you're gonna get it with your hand, you can start with your rolling pin. And so you want a nice sheet of pasta that's a little less than, about an eighth of an inch thick. Um, and again, more or less rectangular in shape. So the next thing we're gonna do to actually form the pasta is we're gonna fold this into thirds. So we're just gonna go from the bottom end up and then over again. So now we have this nice little fold here. And this is where the sharp knife comes in and where you get to make some decisions. So if you kind of don't want this um, rustic, raggedy looking edge, you can just take that off uh, on either side so that you have a true rectangle or the closest thing to it. And then depending on what shape, uh, what size pasta you want, you're just gonna cut straight down. Um, again, uh, it could be wider if you wanted to do tagliatelle. Um, Fettuccine, you're really not going to be able to get thin enough to do a, a true um, a linguine or something like that, but just nice hand cut pasta. And then from here, we can just unroll this and we see we've got those nice long noodles that so many of us are familiar with. And again, any of the pieces that are kind of from the edge that don't maybe come out quite right, if you don't feel like serving them right away, you can always uh, store them in a Ziploc baggie and just next time you make soup, toss them in there. Okay, so we've got our pasta here and we're gonna set this aside onto our prepared sheet and keep going with the rest of our dough. Once you have all of your dough rolled out and formed, just give everything a good toss, make sure it's coated in that flour. And then at this point, this can sit out while your water comes to a boil. The gluten-free pasta works very much the same uh, as a regular pasta, fresh pasta. As soon as it floats to the top, it's ready. So uh, just again, cooks in three to five minutes and you can have this served up with whatever your favorite sauce is. Be sure to check in on the Kachuna next week. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make my spinach pesto and that's what we're actually going to be serving this up with. Guys, as always, the recipe is available at caradefalco.com. You can follow me, Facebook and Instagram, at caradefalco. We want to once again thank our friends over at Caputo Flour. Again, I'll hook you guys up in the link below with their gluten-free pasta flour. Uh, this can also be used one for one for bread and pizza dough as well. That is it for this week, guys. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys next time. Bon appetito.